Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome back to Miss Bellina's Storytime. I'm so happy you're joining me today. Guys, I want to give a shout out to one of my friends who lives in Dallas, Texas. His name is Lucas, and he is six years old. Happy birthday, Lucas. I hope that you have a wonderful birthday. All right. Well, guys, I have this great book that I'd love to share with you today. It's called Corduroy Takes a Bow. It's written by Viola Davis, but it's based on the characters written by and created by Don Freeman. Okay, let's begin. It was just starting to snow when Lisa and her mother got off the bus in front of the theater. Lisa held Corduroy tight as they walked up the steps. She had never been to a big theater like this before, and neither had Corduroy. They had come to see a performance of Mother Goose Rhymes. In the lobby, people were picking up tickets. Ushers handed out programs. A brass chandelier hung from the ceiling that was painted with clouds. Suddenly, the lights flickered on and off. That means the play will start in a few minutes. We should find our seats, said Lisa's mother. Lisa held her mother's hand a little tighter and held Corduroy a little closer. The usher took their tickets and showed them where to sit. The seats are so soft, said Lisa. She put Corduroy on her lap and looked through the program. Right before the play started, a tall man sat down in front of Lisa. Mommy, Lisa whispered to her mother, I can't see. Here, dear, said her mother, we can fold our coats together and you can sit on top of them. When Lisa stood up to sit on the coats, the orchestra started to play. She forgot all about Corduroy, and he slipped off her lap and fell underneath the seats in front of them. Now I can't see anything, said Corduroy. Maybe if I got closer to the music, I could see the stage. He peeked down the aisle and saw some stairs. When Corduroy got to the top step, the big red curtain went up and up and up. Corduroy was so startled that he lost his balance and tumbled into the orchestra pit. He looked around at all the musicians and thought, This is a good spot to hear the music, but now I can't see the stage at all. At the back of the orchestra, there was a tall set of drums. Maybe if I sat up there, I would have a better view, he thought. Quietly, he crawled through the orchestra, past feet, 
between instrument cases and around music stands toward the drums. How did you get here, little fellow? The drummer whispered to Corduroy. You must be a prop from the play. Someone will be looking for you. And he put Corduroy up on the ledge behind the drums. There was a chair off to one side behind the curtain. I could see better from there, thought Corduroy, but before he got to the chair, a stagehand tripped on him. Sorry, Bear, said the stagehand. He put Corduroy on the table with the other props. The table was hard, not like Lisa's soft seat in the theater. Backstage was very busy. Actors were coming and going, changing costumes and getting their props. One actor almost grabbed corduroy. I should find a safer spot, he decided, and he hid between the costumes. This is safe, he thought but I'll never see anything from here. There was a tree with a basket in its branches in the wing off to one side of the stage. I would be able to see from there, Corduroy thought, and he climbed up the tree and into the basket. Well, thought Corduroy, this is more like it. Not too high and not too low. This is just right. He settled in and watched the Mother Goose performance. I love the theater said Corduroy. <clears throat> After a number of different scenes, the stage manager called out. Final scene, everyone. Take your places. Stagehands quickly moved new scenery onto the stage while the actors went to stand in position. Suddenly, Corduroy's tree began moving right onto the stage. <sighs> then it started to grow. Up, up, up went the tree, the basket, and Corduroy. This is a very tall tree, said Corduroy, as he looked down at the stage far below. The tall tree made him think of the tall man who sat in front of Lisa. Corduroy wondered, how will I get back to Lisa if I'm up in this tree? On the stage below, Mother Goose started to sing. Rock-a-bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. Off stage, a fan blew air into the branches of the tree. The cradle began to rock back and forth and up and down, back and forth and up and down. Corduroy was getting dizzy. He held on to the side of the cradle as it rocked faster and faster. Mother Goose kept singing. When the bow 
bell breaks, the cradle will fall. And crack, the bow did break. And down will come baby, cradle and all. Down, down, down came corduroy, cradle and all. Before Corduroy knew what was happening, Mother Goose scooped him up for the curtain call. The audience clapped as the actors bowed and Corduroy bowed too. After the curtain call, the cast took Corduroy backstage to the dressing room. Who does this bear belong to? They wondered. The usher brought Lisa backstage. Corduroy, there you are, said Lisa. How did you get on stage? I couldn't see and I wanted to get a little closer, said Corduroy. Oh, Corduroy, said Lisa, you certainly got closer. <clears throat> the very next day, Lisa made a theater just for Corduroy. He could see everything from a nice, safe spot. How sweet is that? And there they are looking over the program. The end. Wasn't that wonderful? I love this book. <laughs> I hope you guys are going out and getting these books that I'm reading to you. They're my favorites and I know that they'll be your favorites too. Okay, well guys, I would like to just go over a few vocabulary words with you from the story because I feel that when you know vocabulary words that go with a story, then you tend to understand the story a lot better. So let's go through the story one more time. We're not going to read it. I'm just gonna point out certain things and uh, just to give you some background uh, information so that the next time you listen to this story you'll understand it a lot better and it'll make more sense to you okay all right so the first word I'd like to go over is theater a theater is a place that you would go to to either see a movie and some of you may have gone to a theater before um, or to go and see a play that would be a theater. It's a big room and there's lots of seats and there's a stage and uh, sometimes you'll see people sing or dance on the stage and uh, or you'll see them acting. Actors are the people who come out and tell a story and they do it by pretending to be a character uh, in the story. And so um, there you go. So there's that. Now, another word um, was chandelier. Um, a chandelier is usually a big light that hangs from the ceiling. And uh, it's usually very, very pretty. And uh, so they mentioned it in this story. And I wanted you to know there. That's a chandelier. And chandeliers come in many different shapes and sizes and forms. And, um, and so uh, just know that a chandelier is 
is a big light that hangs from the ceiling. Okay? All right. Another word we learned uh, in this story was usher. Now, at the theater, even the movie theaters, you will have ushers. Ushers are the people, men or women, who are dressed in black and they um, normally will have um, programs in their hands like you see here. This person has programs and what they do is as the people come in they'll hand them a program right as you know here in the story Lisa is sitting and looking at the program well the usher um, will hand you an, a program and then they'll take you to your seat because the theater is big there's lots of seats and people pay for their seats so um, when you go into the theater you want to sit in the right seat the seat that you paid for so um, you will normally hand your ticket to the usher the usher will look at it with their um, with their uh, flashlight and then they'll see the number and letter to your seat and then they will take you to that row and that seat and then you go and you sit down just like you see here okay very good then there was another word aisle okay and it's it said that um Corduroy, look down the aisle. The aisle is uh, the space between the rows of seats. So as you can see here, you have seats on this side and then you have seats on that side. And this piece in the middle is the aisle, okay? The next thing I'd like to point out is the orchestra pit. Now, the orchestra pit is this area right here it's normally in front of the stage and in the orchestra pit you have the people who play the music they play instruments um, like trombones clarinets flutes uh, drums all different types of um, of instruments they'll play and these are stands these are music stands these black things here and what the musicians do that's what the, the people who play music are called musicians and what they'll do is they will take uh, their music the paper that has all the notes that they're going to play uh, and they'll put it on these stands and when it's time they will read the music and play their instrument and that's how you hear beautiful, beautiful music for the plays. So cool. So this is called the orchestra pit. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, another great word that we heard about today was called prop. Now, a prop is uh, an item that would be used in the story or the play um, to help and assist with telling the story. So for example, if I were in the kitchen, let's say the story said that uh, Miss Bellina was uh, in the kitchen uh, baking a cake right so you might see me standing at a counter or at a table and you may see me with a bowl and a spoon and i might be mixing in that bowl i might have that spoon there there may not really be anything in there <laughs> it's just that i'm pretending that i'm making something and i'm you know mixing it like that so i've given you the impression that i'm cooking i'm baking i'm doing something in the kitchen okay and as the story goes you can see that and and, and you'll hear that so that's what the props are for you use them to help bring the story hmm, more uh, more real 
And then this one here, this uh, page shows costumes. This helps to bring the story to life also. Now, um, I love costumes because the costumes um, are really neat. So let's say, for example, in the story, it says that a fireman rushed in the door uh, to put out the fire. Well, you're not going to see someone run in with a baseball uniform on or a football uniform on to put out the fire because that's not the fireman, right? Um, you may see uh, a person dressed in a firefighter's costume, um, uh, uniform or costume come in to put out fire. That helps to make the story uh, more realistic. That's the word I should have used before when I said props, realistic. Okay. All right. Let's see. Now, the next uh, word that I'd like to put out for you. Oh, a scene. Okay. Now with the scene, that is pretty neat because a scene tells a story, a story. It, it tells you, um, like, where the story is taking place. It might tell you when the story is taking place. Like it might be, the scene might look like it's nighttime. It uh, might look bright and sunny and shiny. Maybe the scene takes place inside a kitchen. So then you'll have the scene will look like a kitchen. All right. Uh, so the stage, the, the, on the stage, they will take and make it look like a kitchen for you. Uh, and then the actors act in the kitchen. Okay. Stage hand was another word. These are stage hands. They're the people who move the scenes back and forth and all around in order for the story to be told. They're always dressed in black because they don't want um, you, the audience, to see them moving things around. So the lights will be off and they'll quickly come in and they will move things out and move new things in and then they'll turn the lights on and voila, it's a whole new scene. Pretty neat. Oh, I hope you get to see a play one day or go to the movies. Okay, so here's the scene. All oh, this is so exciting. Here are the actors, they're singing and acting, dancing, and then at the end. They all come together and they take a bow. They hold hands and they bow. And when they do that, the audience, the audience are the people who are sitting out in the seats, right? They are all excited and they'll clap their hands and say, hooray or bravo, very good. <laughs> All right, and then some of the last few words for you are dressing room. Now the dressing room is the place where the actors get dressed. It's where they prepare for their part in the play. They will go to their dressing room and they'll switch their clothes or their costumes to put on um, the next uh, costume that they need in the scene and then they go out well that's that's it um so i wanted to just share that with you today um just to give you a better understanding of some of the things you heard in the story and i hope that the next time you hear this corduroy takes a bow by viola davis that you will understand it all a lot more and um, that you will enjoy it even more. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me in Miss Bellina's story time. 
See you next time. Bye.